Welcome back to United Gamers Authority. I'm Shade Hunter, and this is the seventh episode of my Masterclass series. And today, we need some serious weaponry. So let's get some weapons. All right, so here we have all the different types of weapons. We're going to go over them quickly because we have a very limited amount of time, and I'm sorry the last episode was so long. It just got away from me. There was a lot of information that I really felt like it tied in together, so hopefully I can keep them short and sweet from here on out. So now you're in the game and you want to figure out what type of weapon you want to make in a better version. So we're going to just kind of go from ranged to two-handed to one-handed, and we'll go from there. So ranged weaponry, starting out, we've got the bow. It's relatively simple. They generally have a lower health damage and lower armor pen, but it also takes into consideration the arrow as well. So how do you fire an arrow? When I first started, I felt so dumb because I was like, okay... Okay, that, that's going to be really hard to, you know, try to figure out the arc. Well, then I figured out that was just left click. If you hold right click, it starts sucking down your stamina. If you look at my stamina bar up there, and you hold it and aim. And if you saw the little spark of light at the tip of the arrow, that's a power shot. And it does quite a bit more damage, and it goes in a straight line farther. The bow is something that you want to use when you want to keep that enemy as far away from you as possible. I'm not going to demonstrate the bow on an enemy because I'm not doing a bow build this time. If you want to see a bow build, you can check out our, uh, actually some of our other videos. I did it and um, on Twitch, which I will be leaving a link in the description. Uh, I do uh, streaming over there and I have a really crazy agility bow build there. So... Pull with the right click, fire with the left, and that's a power shot, but it does use a lot more stamina. You can kind of trick it to go in between by holding and firing really quick. And it does a little bit more than just the regular shooting, but less than the full power shot. So it's something. On to the next. I am not doing a bow build. The, the one drawback of the bow is you have to make arrows and carry arrows. I actually just used up all of my arrows, and they actually weigh quite a bit. I mean, if you get... It doesn't seem like much here, but when you have a stack of them, it, it gets heavy. So you got to take that consideration as well. Um, the throwing axe is kind of interesting. When you use it, it is in your left hand, so you can't really use the, the the mouse buttons to do anything. But when you have it, with the way you you throw it is you use the control the left control button, and then you can go up and pick it up. That's the cool thing about thrown weapons is you have a, an ability to pick them up. You occasionally will get arrows back, but it's it's hit or miss. The throwing axe generally does not have an armor pen, but it has pretty decent damage. Uh, the throwing axe is considered a strength weapon. If you looked at the bow, it is considered an agility weapon. So, throwing axe, it's more of a skirmisher build that kind of goes along with this, so you with the, uh, the spear or javelin. So you have one in each hand. So you're effectively carrying two weapons. Um, with the stone ones, uh, the, the javelin's actually got pretty decent damage and armor pen, but it's an agility weapon. So you would have to mix and match with this. With Later on, I'll get into the armors and the different bonuses they have. But you'd have to mix and match and kind of adjust your settings and your attributes to be able to make it work. So... Javelin, 
You can do melee with just the left click. Javelin, spear, whatever you want to call it. Or you can throw it. And again, this one, you can... Wow, that went all the way through that pillar. Interesting. And you can pick it up again. So, you can have stacks of these, but they weigh quite a bit more. They are one pound each, or whatever weight system they're using. Um, so you really can't carry as much. I would say ten of each. So that's twenty pounds of weapons you'd be carrying on you. And you could potentially lose them. There have been so many times where I've been, you know, attacking with the with a javelin and then accidentally throw it, and that was my last one, and then I couldn't find it again because it went off into who knows where. So that is the rowing weapons. Or all the ranged weapons. I'm not going to be doing a Berserker build. And what I mean by build is you dedicate points to the weaponry and style of fighting you're going to be doing. And at the end of this masterclass, when my character's 60 and I've got all the resources that I need, I will go through and I will demonstrate every possible build for every possible weapon. So... Next up, we have two-handed weapons. First, we've got them all, and I'm actually, I'm just going to go ahead and grab these all in, in my inventory, because I can. And they are used quite a bit differently. Um, generally speaking, the builds for the maul and the two-handed sword are generally the same, because all it is is just a style of weapon. Now, there is also a two-handed axe, but I did not bother getting one or spawning it um, because it's it's used quite a bit differently later on I will go over it when I find one or when I have the ability to make one but right now let's go over the maul maul is a very heavy weapon you want to make sure you get the first hit so you can stagger the enemy and they use a lot of stamina and it is very slow but it is very powerful. Like right now, the, just the stone maul does 17 damage and 40 armor pen. And it sunders. And sundering is breaking through the enemy's defenses. Breaking through their armor. Lowering their armor rating so you can do even more damage. So if you want to be a heavy hitter and you want to really smack it to them, this hammer is definitely the way to go. But it's very funky. Next up, we have the two-handed sword. Um, actually, hang on. Okay, the, the left control special attack with the hammer is kicking them. If you kick somebody with a shield, it can stagger them, and you then you have a chance to smack them. So. Alright, two-handed sword. Light attacks are pretty quick, and it's really easy to use, and a lot of people like it. The heavy attacks are somewhat quick but not as much because i mean it is a two-handed weapon but when you connect it hurts so the two-handed weapon the two-handed stone sword is 19 damage 20 armor pen strength weapon just like the hammer but this one cripples it slows them down <clears throat> excuse me not exactly sure I still have yet to figure out how that can help you because you're already in their face. They don't really need to move. But if you've got other people with you and you're crippling them, they're less likely to be able to make it to a ally and hurt them. So it works. Next up, we have the pike. Um, all these two-handed weapons are pretty much the same downfall. They're slow. That's why I'm I'm not a huge fan of them. I have used them. But it's also about play style. Um, my pros and cons would more than likely conflict with somebody else's because they may not see it as a, as a con. They might like that idea. So who knows? It's just what I like and don't like. So uh, the spear, it's, it's interesting. It keeps the enemy at a distance. So if I'm standing, I'm effectively one block away from that, that pillar, and I can still hit it. 
with my light attack. If I have the sword, I have to step forward and I still missed it. So the spear gives you a little bit of a uh, little bit of range to keep them at bay. Um, that's the light attack. The stone spike, the or spear or whatever you have. Sometimes they're called tridents. Um, the, their specialty is is the reach. Um, they have decent damage, uh, mediocre armor pen, but if you do heavy attacks, see that red that red trail on there on that final hit. Keep stabbing really hard. You spin and stab. That causes bleed, so that's a status effect you can add to them. So now we know that the hammer does sunder, the two-handed sword does cripple, and the stone or the pike. Or spear does bleed. So now the last two-handed weapon, and the reason I call it two-handed weapon is because you have two of them, one in each hand. They are generally pretty light on the damage, mediocre on the armor pen, but they cause a lot of bleed. Now the normal attacks really don't cause bleed, but they're fast, very fast, and I really love the daggers. Um, the heavy attacks are a little bit slower, but it Every attack has that trail on it, that wolf, that red trail. That tells you they cause bleed. Now, the special thing with the... Oh, I didn't do a special thing with the spear. It's a kick as well. Just saying. The special attack, or special ability with the daggers, it, as you're attacking, if they turn and face you, you're going to be wearing like light or medium armor. If they turn to face you, that's your dodge. You just get out of their way, and they can't hit you. It's really fun. All right. Um, downside with the daggers is you need to be light and quick on your feet and learn how to dodge rapidly. Otherwise, uh, it hurts. It hurts a lot. All right. On to one-handed weapons. We have the sword, the mace... And I will not be using this weapon because I did not make it. I spawned it, but it's the axe. These are the main one-handed weapons. All of them can either be used by themselves or with a shield. That's the bonus of them. Um, with all of these, your left control is your block. And they have different animations for attacks. So, light attack is... Is that... That's pretty much the whole whole rotation. A heavy attack, you stab, and then you do this whole thing with the shield. Without the shield, it is all the weapon. And all of them will incorporate the shield or no shield, depending on what you're doing. Let's go over here in the light. So, one-handed sword does cripple. Has a decent amount of... Uh, Damage and decent amount of armor pen. The second most powerful weapon in the game is a one-handed sword. But when we find it, there's a slight caveat to that. It's very interesting. So, the weapon I'm going to be using is the mace, which you all have already seen me use. It has decent damage and decent armor pen. Shield smash. And the shield smash is, if somebody's blocking and you do a heavy attack you will smash right through their shield and injure their hand. And they'll sit there and shake it. It's kind of funny. So you've seen the rotation with the shield. Slamming with the shield. But let's check out the rotation. Without the shield. Not the hammer. This is the light attacks with no shield. And then the heavy attacks with no shield. is still pretty powerful and I really like using the hammers now uh, sword is cripple uh, the hammer is shield smash but it also will sunder on the last heavy attack I believe the axe also has a shield smash but it will also ble uh, cause bleed just like that spear and the two-handed axe also does bleed I believe but you have to go through the full rotation to get it. 
So the full rotation on the light attacks, a little bit different. Really don't use the shield in it. Heavy attacks, that's where you use the shield and you cause bleed due to the red blood trails. And without it, light attacks pretty much look the same. And then you have the heavy attacks. Causes bleed. All right. So, the one-handed weapons, the downside is you, you they, they're short, short reach. Um, you're going to want a shield to help mitigate some of the damage you take. And it's more along play style, really. The sword is faster than the axe. The axe is faster than the mace. Um... Yeah, so, and honestly, the fastest weapon in the game, I believe, are the daggers. So, but this time, we are doing a strength build. We are going to do maces. Oh, and in the crafting stations, real quick, if you have all the DLCs and all this other special stuff, and you don't want to see it, which I'm not going to go into all that stuff right now, you click none. It's base game stuff only. And that's the way I'm going to have it for this masterclass up until the end. All right, so we got our flanged mage, which has a 17 damage. and We'll uh, check it out in a minute. And then here, and I will explain where these two pieces of armor came from later, like next episode. <coughs> Excuse me. And we are making the wooden targe. Come on, Mace. Let's go. So, this one starts out 17 damage, 24 armor pen. If you come over here to the wooden one that I did have, this was 13 damage, 24 armor pen. So, same armor penetration, but a little bit more damage. And the durability is quite a bit better at 660. Wooden Tars. It has a health damage of 16, because if you notice the rotations, you hit them with the shield. So it has a health damage of 16, armor penetration of thir 13, uh, and the wooden shield was 12-12, so it's quite a bit better. Plus, the uh, durability is... A How is the wooden shield to have more durability? Anyway, I'm going with the wooden charge, just because it looks better. So, now we have our weapons, and we are good to go. So, next episode, we are going to be going over the armors. It's going to be a little bit quicker. So, thank you all for watching. Really appreciate it. Remember, there's going to be links in the description. I've got a few of them I'm going to put in there, but we will get over that. Go over all of that next week when I do some changes um, with some of the links. So, thank you all for watching. Really appreciate it. Please hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon for more videos to come. Catch you on the flip side. Later.